Okay, uh, so I'm back kicking off with the uh, puppet track uh, now. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about creating puppet providers. Um, talk a little bit about me to start. Um, my name's Jonathan. Uh, I've worked at Media Temple for about a year now as a systems engineer. Um, if you want to find me anywhere, you can find me on Twitter, that says Jonathan, or the Puppet Labs firewall, mo firewall module I've been working on with the amazing Ken Barber for quite a while. Uh, we need testers, so please check it out and give us feedback. So I have a few questions to start with, actually. Uh, who here has infrastructure that they would like to manage with Puppet but currently can't? Awesome. Who here has actually tried to write a custom type of provider? And how many have succeeded? Okay, not too bad. So, uh, I know this is a Puppet 201 talk, but I didn't know how well it would go over if it was too complicated. So I wanted to create something that's kind of small but kind of useful to introduce some core concepts. and. Started looking around, and after looking at slash bin and slash s bin, I came up with mod probe. It could be, it's easy, it's very simple, uh, and it could be useful to many people. And pardon me for looking up here all the time, but my notes aren't working, so. To start with, we'll just look at the overall directory structure. Uh, pretty much like a normal Puppet module, except you'll notice that there is the provider and type. And I added the spec directory for tests, but we will not be talking about that today. So the important bits we are gonna talk about are the resource type, the resource provider, the manifest, because you need to declare your resources, and we won't be talking about tests. So the type. So the mod probe type and the puppet type mod probe, uh, it's very simple, it's very easy. Uh, nothing too crazy, there's a single parameter, a couple insurable values, and a doc string. So let's so actually go through the individual individual components. Uh, we're gonna talk about the new type block, the doc strings, the insurable method, and params and properties. It's so a new type block. New type block is actually a method. It's implemented by Puppet Meta Type Manager, and it accepts the name of a type and a Ruby block as parameters. So in our Puppet type for mod probe, it looks something like this, which is really small, I apologize. But you can see new type method, uh, type name and the do block, the do keyword, indicating that it is a block. So documentation string, self-explanatory, but really, you should always document your, your code. Uh, one nice thing about the doc, the doc strings are that the output of the doc strings are viewable via puppet describe, insert type here. So uh, in our doc string, our, in our doc string, which is managed Linux kernel modules, uh, the output from Puppet Describe Mod Probe actually looks something like this, where you can see our actual doc string as well as the parameters, which we'll get to in a little bit, and the providers that actually implement this type. So Insurable, Insurable actually tells Puppet to expect three provider methods. Uh, those are create, destroy, and exist. I actually didn't feel like create or destroy worked with the Mod Probe nomenclature. Um, so instead of create, destroy, and exist, uh, you can also pack a Ruby block as a parameter. Uh, so you can actually define your own provider methods to use. So in the case of our provider, we went ahead and <coughs> if, if insure is set to present, it'll actually use the load method from the provider. And if it's absent, it'll actually use the unload. So parameters and properties, we only have a single parameter module which is the module name, and is named var. So the module parameter tells the mod probe type which module to load. Is named var method uses the value of this parameter as the name of the resource, um, which isn't that big of a deal, it should be pretty obvious. Uh, parameters versus properties though, parameters are, are kind of like variables for the most part. Properties are also parameters, but they also do stuff. Um, I like to think of them sort of as the modifiable bits. Um, in the case of a user, it would be password and stuff that you can actually check against and change. Um, so our actual type looks like this. So we have the new type method, which takes the type name and the do block. Doc string, we have our insurable methods, 
which is the load method from the provider and the unload method from the provider. And it defaults to present, so whenever you define your resources, it'll automatically try to make sure it's present. And the single param for module. Not that big of a deal. So our actual provider looks something like this. Um, and the key parts of this are going to be the provider block, the commands, confine, and the insurable methods. So the provider block is really similar to the new type block. It, uh, it's a method. It actually lives in puppet type. Uh, it actually takes the name of our type and a Ruby block as parameters as well. So in the case of the provider, it actually looks something like this. And you see, there's the method, there's the name, and there's the do keyword indicating that we have a block. So the commands, uh, the commands method actually accepts a hash as a param. So in the case of ours, we actually went ahead and had one for ls mod and one for mod probe. And these could actually be different if you wanted to, but and it takes that hash and creates met methods for each of those commands, which accept an array of arguments. Um, Commands also behave as, con as confines. Uh, if a command doesn't exist on the system, then the provider's not gonna work. Um, so again, here's our commands method, here's the name, and here's what it's actually pointing to. So confines uh, are a great way to limit where the provider gets run. Uh, they can compare factor facts, they can test for file existence, or they can test whether a value is true or false. In our case, we actually don't need this confine since hopefully SBIN mod probe doesn't live on other OSs. But just to illustrate, I went ahead and confined the kernel to Linux. The insurable methods, uh, as I said before, it automatically defines three of them, uh, create, destroy, and exist. Uh, the exist checks if the resource is currently present. It helps determine whether resources should be created or destroyed on the system. So, if you actually set insure to present and uh, exist comes up false, then it'll actually create the provider uh, or create the resource on the system. If you set uh, insure to absent and exist shows true, then it'll actually remove the resource from the system, as illustrated there. So in our case, uh, I didn't want the create and I didn't want the destroy, so I went ahead and did load and unload. Uh, we had the debug strings, not that big of a deal. Uh, and here is the command that we set up earlier for mod probe, which accepts the resource name as, as a parameter. And there's the unload, which does the same thing, but also prefaces it with the command line flag for dash r. Uh, most commands are typically command line commands. Uh, and for ls mod, we did a really, really janky regex match just to see if the actual name of the resource shows up in LSMON. So here's actually a rundown of the full provider. Uh, you'll notice we have the provide method. There is the name, there's the do block, there's the doc strings, commands, the confines, load method and load method exists. So the manifest, because you actually have to implement it somehow. Uh, there's actually two ways to do this one due to uh, a failure on my part, but I think it's kind of interesting. So you can either do it this way. Since, name, since modules is name var, you can actually just specify the name and then it'll also populate the module uh, parameter. Or you could also actually specify the module parameter, which will overwrite the name for, the, for that resource. And here's a few things I've learned by doing this. Um, so mapping resource parameters to application data structures can be difficult. Uh, we, we ran into this with IP tables where you need to correctly map out your, what your parameters are gonna be and how they fit in with the application you're going to. So we're trying to determine whether, how to correctly map jump and all of the different parameters that IP tables would take. Um, and that was a huge, point, the huge issue for us. Uh, we're still trying to determine how to do that for other providers. Um, and the other issue we ran into a lot was scoping can be really complicated. Um, especially when using provider inheritance. So again, in the case of the IP tables, or the firewall module, uh, we have a base firewall provider 
and IP tables and IP6 tables actually inherit from that. So you'll see a lot of self.class.foo uh, trying to figure out where exactly in the scope you are. Um, and that was insanely quick. But seriously, it's that easy, so everyone should try to write one. But I guess I'll ask questions now, because that was way too quick. <laughs> so, all right, so who, out of the people who've actually implemented providers, what have you guys done? Just someone throw out an example. And, anybody? Nice. And what, what, did you see any issues while trying to implement that? Um, so one of the interesting things that I ran into is for the, the uh, Jensen package types, you have to do some sort of out, out of validation to make sure you're passing in a valid value. And so I basically threw the name bar after every time I had to validate um, this code. And it would be really nice if there was some sort of neat way to you know, say a new, new atom for him or a new atom. And so I went into this and discovered that it was a little messy. <coughs> Anybody else? So we did some grid engine, so we had, were able to make a type for execution host that would run on the, the master server, so we would just provide resources to the execution host, and we could load them into the original node classifier, and it would go right in. But one of the problems we were having was that those, if I were to try to list the commands that some grid engine uses to add and remove hosts as the, in the command directive, they would confine on machines that would only have that installed, and Puppet installs Grid Engine. So there's that race condition of, well, Grid Engine is not installed yet, so this command doesn't exist, so then the thing fails, and then we can't get past that point. I actually don't even remember how I solved it. I've been working around it somehow. <laughs> Very interesting question. If the if that resource type has multiple providers, then yes. I told you that a new provider to the user resource to uh right currently will instantiate all uh all that users it goes to your NS switch. Mm -hmm. Explicitly uh, specifying the, the actual provider is how I solved that last time. Um, yeah, as long as you just in your resource, just specify the provider and that should resolve that, I believe. Anybody else? Because we have a lot of time. <laughs> and that's what I get for rushing. Well, thank you. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Yep, I will. Uh, they'll be on GitHub and I'll, uh, under sla GitHub slash users, or slash uh, says Jonathan, actually. Same as my Twitter <laughs> handle. So, all right, great. Is there a module that usable snake drag enabled now? <laughs> Ken. <laughs> Is IP tables in usable state? For a simple firewall. For a simple firewall, yes. It doesn't do uh, existing rules very well at the moment. Uh, it kind of chokes. Uh, we're trying to figure out how we can correctly parse those existing yeah, rules. I, I want to use what I have now to start with. Okay. If you, if you start up with an empty uh, file list, that it should be fine. But there's a bug right now where we're actually looking for comments. And if you don't have that, it breaks. It's a known bug. We have a we have a way of working around it. We just haven't implemented it yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. But we do want more people using it, and we definitely do want more people contributing to it. Yes. If more people could at least test that for us, that would be amazing. Um, currently, it's IP, IP tables and IP6 tables. 
Um, and that's actually one where you need to specify IP6 tables as the provider explicitly. Um, but yeah. Did we actually implement that? Yeah. Nah. Mainly we're trying to do filtering. That's the main thing. But for IP tables, we definitely do support SNAP. Yeah. Okay, Chris, I think it's... Yeah. I'm not sure if in the presentation you covered the instances method in the provider for free caching. I didn't, actually, because we didn't need it in this yeah. case. Um, that's, that's something I had to come across in mind. I'm wondering if, if, if the instance method for free caching and what's already available on the system works correctly, is there a reason to even use it exists anymore? It's an interesting question. Even Ken is shaking his head. Um, so we actually, uh, during prefetch, we go ahead and run instances and populate the property hash and in IP tables right off the bat. Um, and exists actually goes to that property hash to see if it exists. So. That's, yeah. So it's just like a shift. Yep, yep. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, we've got uh, quite a gap now between uh, now and the next talk, so we're back at uh, four o'clock. Um, what I'd probably suggest is I know mean, obviously people can hang around in here, but there's loads of space out there, um, there's uh, some drinks. Uh, and if, if anyone's got anything cool to show off, lots of people have got laptops. Um, certainly I'd be interested in seeing if anyone's hacking on anything interesting, because we've got quite a bit of time. But, yeah. Otherwise we'll be back in 45 minutes. <laughs>